things are changing in the Phoenix, Arizona real estate market. It is a low volume market. And what I mean by that is number of transactions are so low, but low volume does not mean lower prices. No matter like the clickbait headlines that you're clicking on that saying everything's going to crash. Contrary to that belief, we just hit our highest dollar per square foot ever recorded in the AR MLS, which is the Phoenix Metro database at $308 a square foot. So for low prices or prices to decline, we need excess inventory. We need desperate sellers. We're just not there yet. So I'm going to dive into all of this and more, but before we get started, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, liking, sharing. It really does help me and help the channel out, and I really am grateful and appreciate it. So let's, uh, let's jump in. <music> Mortgage rates for the last two years has suppressed demand. It has done what the Fed has wanted it to do, which is make it very difficult to buy a home. Supply is up 44% over last year. So that is great if you're a buyer. You have so many more options, right? But our, we're still 27% below a normal market, but our demand is 20% below what we would normally be at. So what that has done is it's brought us to, for the most part, a balanced market, okay? So we're seeing homes sit on the market longer, Things aren't going in like three or four days like they used and to. Let's dive into the different cities. Here's a chart right here, right here. <laughs> so we can kind of see where everything is going. If it's over a hundred, that means it's better for sellers. If it's under a hundred, it's better for buyers. And right around a hundred means more of a balanced market. And this just shows the change in the last month, okay? So again, as we can see, Chandler and Gilbert still doing well, still at the top, still well over 100. And let me tell you with Chandler, it's been in the top for like forever. And Chandler is really great, but the one reason that Chandler's at the top is because they're pretty much landlocked. There's really nowhere to build unless you go to the reservation and that's not something that we can build on, right? So. That is kind of why they're doing so well. There's not a lot for sale there. And Chandler also has some really affordable areas, but Chandler, just like all cities, has their spotty areas as well. And, you know, they're kind of working on redeveloping things, right? And just like normal, all of the cities on the outskirts of town tend to come down quicker and go back up a little bit slower, right? Because they're further from the center of town. So Buckeye, Maricopa, things like that, they are more of a buyer's market right now. Surprise, really interesting. It's been in and out, buyer, seller, buyer, but with all the new builds out there, it's really favoring buyers right now because it's so hard to compete with a new build because you can buy a new build home in some of the areas and surprise for the same price as a resale home. You guys, let's take a look at my favorite map. That way, no matter what part of the valley you are wanting information on, I'm going to go through the different months and you'll be able to see as it changes color. So you'll have an idea what you are up so again. Here we are. I'm down on March 30th. Here are the colors over here. So the more blue it is, don't get confused the blue with the gray, but the more blue, the better for buyers. The more warm colors, the better for sellers. I am doing condos, townhomes, and single family homes, as well as 200,000 to 2 million. So this is across almost all price points, as well as almost all types of homes. And you can just kind of watch it change. It's just, I love this map. It's so interesting, right? So, okay. So we here we are at March 30th, right? Here's the greater Phoenix area. So you can see at that point, surprise was very much so in a balance to cold market. So better for buyers. Again, you've got the Glendale, uh, Peoria, Tolleson, um, a lot of the areas in here with some more entertainment options closer to the center of the city, definitely warmer. Okay. And then you've got a lot of your more expensive areas, uh, Scottsdale, Paradise Valley, things like that. were definitely colder, but you've got some of your magic zip codes in here for technically Paradise Valley Village and the Desert Ridge area. And of course, the whole East Valley pretty much is uh, warm uh, or hot for sellers. And I'm from here, you guys. I'm a Phoenix native. I'm actually from up here where it is very, very hot. And um, I live down here where it's also very, very hot for sellers. So anyhow, um, but you can see this little area of Mesa. Now, this is a lot of 
retirement and mobile homes in here. So that's probably why this is a little bit cooler as you can see. Okay, here we are. So April 6th, you can see the week of April 13th, it's heating up. Um, if you're a buyer, always better to buy second half of the year, uh, statistically speaking. And if you're a seller, typically better to sell first half of the year because there tends to be more demand. Now this year, if rates drop in the fall, all bets are off, right? Because it might not be as good for buyers because a lot of buyers might come out. And if there's not as many listings, it's going to be amazing for sellers because you're going to get more demand with lower rates, less competition. You're going to get multiple offers on your home. So just really, you need to watch the market right now, watch interest rates and get some data and some trends, follow people that are following stuff like this. So you kind of know if you're waiting to buy that you're, you're aware of, um, you know, when that strike when the iron is hot or whatever the sayings are. So anyhow, let's keep scrolling through. So April 20th, um, it's just crazy to see that the whole East Valley just seems to consistently stay warm. And again, you can see the more expensive areas staying a little bit cooler. And I cut it off at 2 million and our luxury is actually like 1 to 1.5 or up now. So um, there's probably a lot more higher end homes there that this just isn't showing. So it's probably not as cold as it as it looks, if you are a luxury buyer, reach out to me. I can run you a special report. And we are at May 4th. So you can see things really cooling down, um, except for the East Valley, I guess you could say, in a couple parts of Central Phoenix. And May 11th, East Valley staying really hot. West Side, good year and stuff, starting to pick up a little. Tolleson has a ton of new builds. Um, so they're definitely probably getting demand there because they're offering great rates. And again, your more expensive areas, probably with the price point I chose, um, not as active. And now we have the last week and you can see things are starting to cool down a little bit finally in the East Valley. I shouldn't say finally, but um, if you're a buyer, then, you know, summer might be a better time, it looks like, um, as our inventory builds. If rates kind of stay where they are, you might be able to get into something before fall for a good deal as well. So, okay, you guys, now I'm going to take you to my MLS, and I'm going to show you... I think my foot massager just went on. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm going to show you kind of the different price points around the valley, so you have an idea of where prices have been, where they're going, and you can kind of understand... <laughs> I don't know what's going on down there. So you can kind of understand uh, what it is if you're looking to buy or sell. So let me share my screen with you again real quick. You can see we're about 18,500. This does pull in a little bit of uh, Pinal County. So this is the greater Phoenix area, right? So we're going to do just active because technically coming soon is reserved for people working with just a realtor. They're not syndicated to the public yet. So I'm not going to show you those. So we actually have 17,720 that are currently active. Here is where we're at. Single family home under 500,000 with a two car garage and a pool. And so you can kind of see where the more affordable areas in the city are, right? You've got a lot of the west side and that's what that's why a lot of people move to the west side right it is a little bit more affordable let me zoom in a little bit here so you can kind of see some of the uh, glendale a lot of the i-17 corridor now the i-17 like i've said before it's our original freeway it's really ugly traffic is terrible i'm not gonna lie to you i <laughs> I really don't like driving on the 17, but um, but it's getting better. And with the conductor plants up here, living along the 17 is really coming along. The houses are getting flipped and it's only a matter of time until that area really expands and becomes really nice. So this might be a good area to start investing in if you're looking for like an investment property. That's That would be my thought process, right? Um, but this whole area... Can't you know you always want to check your crime stats? Yes, this can be a little bit higher in crime, but again, that doesn't mean the people that live there aren't really wonderful and amazing just because that it has crime, right? And in surprise, this is why so many people love surprise because it is more affordable. I mean, look at all the homes over here for five hundred thousand or less with a garage and a pool, right? So that's really, really great. And then you can kind of see over here. So Litchfield Park, not really, because that is a nicer part of the West Side. And in here, you've got a lot of new builds, of course. And you can see, um, but right in here is some Avondale. And so that uh, does tend to get more affordable, it can have sometimes more crime, check your crime stats, but you can kind of see anyway where some of that is. Then you've got some South Phoenix in here. Again, uh, probably the, one of the most affordable places to live in the entire Valley. And then you've got some Buckeye out here. 
And as you can see, there is not a soul in Scottsdale for under 500,000 with a pool and a garage. Now, a lot of South Scottsdale doesn't have garages. They have carports or they've been converted to living space. So I'm sure if I were to take off garage, this would change a little bit, but Scottsdale is just very expensive. You're paying to live in Scottsdale, right? Scottsdale's amazing. I can't argue it. So uh, they do have a lot of Airbnbs. I think I just heard on the news, uh, like 480 Airbnbs just in like South Scottsdale alone or something like that. Don't quote me on that. Anyhow, you can also see Tempe basically has nothing for that either. Tempe is a very desirable place to live. Uh, Watuki pretty much has nothing. A couple spots in here. So this is your Chandler, Gilbert, Mesa border in here. And there's a couple neighborhoods that are a little bit spotty. So you're going to find some flipped homes in here. Now, this area is only going to get better because everything around it is clearly more expensive by looking at the chart. So this would be a good place to purchase and kind of watch the area grow as well if you're looking for investment or you want to get into an area that's really going to grow. And that's kind of what you want to look at. What's the surrounding area like? So when you go to purchase a home, you need to research these things. Okay. So again, I'm from here and I'm a full-time agent, born and raised. I've lived, worked, played all over the Valley. I have friends and family all over the Valley. And I love helping you guys um, look for places to buy. And when you're looking to sell, I love giving you guys charts and data and just very analytical and stuff. But anyhow, um, so this is the area I was talking about, the South Gilbert and a little bit of South Chandler and then into Queen Creek. And this is all larger lots and a ton of new builds and they're expensive new builds. Okay. So you are not going to see a lot in here under 500,000 unless it's a total teardown. If you can find that, then, you know, awesome. So, um, and as again, you can see as we cruise down. So Maricopa, obviously very affordable. You do have quite a drive and not really many amenities out there, but a lot of people love going out there because of the quietness and privacy. There's you know, golf and retirement communities. So now you get into Santan Valley, which is having awesome growth. Um, it's actually so pretty out there. I was over here. This is a huge new area being built called Superstition Vistas. And then you've got Eastmark in here. So anyhow, you guys, um, you can kind of see just by looking at a map where the more affordable homes are going to be, right? So, okay, you guys, my computer was having a little freak out. So I'm back. So I switched it to 500,000 to 1 million. And this is the, so before we did under 500,000 with a pool and a two car garage, and we kind of see the areas where things are more affordable. Now we are the same stipulations, but 500,000 to a million. So you can obviously see, holy moly, right? We're very populated. So clearly no matter where you want to live, that's a very popular price point and a very popular type of home. And it appears to be very evenly spread out over a lot of the areas, except of course for Paradise Valley, because there's really not much under a million there. And um, some of the places, there is some places in Glendale and Peoria that have very, very nice homes that are going to be more expensive than that. Um, so you can kind of tell, and you can see over here in like Buckeye, they just don't have a lot of homes that are in that price point or Tolleson. Now in South Phoenix, if you get really close to the mountain, you can see that these homes do get more expensive. You can see clearly this is the average price point and type of home in Ahwatukee and clearly Gilbert, I mean, everywhere, right? So uh, South Scottsdale, now you're not going to find a lot in North Scottsdale for that. Um, it's going to be usually more over a million. Now I'm on uh, same same type of amenities with the two car plus garage and a private pool. And I'm at the 1.5 to 10 million. So you can clearly see where the more expensive parts of the valley are. Not really much at all on the west side, but you've got Central Phoenix. You've got the Biltmore, Arcadia, uh, Camelback East, Paradise Valley, Paradise Valley Village, Scottsdale, North Scottsdale. Uh, getting into Fountain Hills, Rio Verde, Cave Creek, Carefree. Uh, and then you've got, like I said, all of that lower area of the East Valley, the newer Gilbert, Ocotillo, Queen Creek. And you're going to get some custom new builds out here as well in Apache Junction and Las Sendas. And this is a really unique area right here in Mesa, you guys. Mesa gets such a bad rep. There are parts of Mesa that are being worked on, right? But this area in Mesa... Uh, by Falcon Field has custom homes. They're on old citrus groves. They're like one, two acre estates. I'm talking like 
8,000, 10,000 square foot homes, just a very um, unique area if you ever drive through there. But clearly you can see that the central Phoenix into Scottsdale is where the more expensive homes are. So now I am at 5 million and up. And you can see exactly where that is concentrated. Again, it's going to be Paradise Valley, Scottsdale, and North Scottsdale. So nothing surprising here. Uh, nothing on the west side there. Not really even a ton on the south side. It's just very concentrated. I mean, over 5 million is definitely going to be that Paradise Valley and North Scottsdale area. And I just hope this helps you guys see where the different areas, what the price points are for the average type of home. And, you know, if we take out pools and stuff, this is going to change. If we take out garages, it's going to change. You might be able to find an amazing home that doesn't have a garage. Maybe it has a carport, but you can convert, you know, 10 to 20,000, make your carport a garage and maybe get in somewhere amazing. So always consider that in your home search as well. The median price is at about 440 and we've been there for a couple years. So it's safe to say that that is really our median price point, right? So what I want to say about that is if you are looking under the median price point, so under the 440 to 450 mark, it's going to be more competitive because that's where a lot of people's affordability is. But also that may not be the safest area because it's less than what the average priced home is, or I shouldn't say average, average and median are different. It's less than our median priced home. If you're looking above 450, 500 and up, you're probably going to be in a little bit of a um, less crime area because that is above our median price. So it's above what a lot of people are paying for a home. So that is one way to kind of think of when you're looking at price points. Now, it's different with a townhome or a condo because those prices aren't going to be the same as a single family home. Don't forget a two-story home is going to comp out differently than a one-story home as well. Two-story homes are typically more affordable if you're going by dollar per square foot. And I am an expert in my field and I can run all sorts of great data for you if you're thinking of selling your home out here or you are maybe relocating to Phoenix. I do a ton of relocations. Uh, or if you live here and you're looking to purchase a home, I would love to help you as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm really grateful and I will see you guys on my next video. Thank you.